Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy time zone, everybody. Give me a moment. There we are. Now the captions should be registering. Oh, nope, I do not see that they are. What gives? Let me see. Let me check the thing. Technical difficulties. I thought that I had everything set up. Captions are enabled. Randomly filter is off. Mm. Well, this is slightly, this is slightly disappointing, but, um, having some technical difficulties, but I guess when you are a streamer, when are, when are there not technical difficulties? Uh, let me see what I can do. Uh, let's see, application, audio, output. Let's see. I hope everyone has been having a great time today. I've been doing I've been doing pretty all right. I'm very excited for uh, the next few days. Yet technical difficulties. Welcome to stream life. Preach, flipping preach. Well, because for me, it's also because I got everything for my streaming stuff transferred over to my new tower. Um, so I thought I had everything set up. And I thought I had everything figured out. Turns out, uh, my captions aren't going how they should. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is it even registering? Oh, no, it's not. It's not even registering that there's anything going on in VC. I wonder if there's ways that I can let's see cash and source. I guess since it is just myself, I'll have it set to my microphone. Okay, now I see the captions are hopping on. I'll have to remember how to set captions for when I have other people here as well. Um, you know what, since I am a sucker for punishment, I want to get that done and situated now. So let me see. Let's see. Application audio capture. Uh, I hope everyone has been doing all right. I got some news for you all because goodness gracious. There has been a lot that has been going on, namely uh, the move to the new apartment. Um, that has been going really well. Top Hat and I are getting used to this place really, really nicely. And yeah, I probably sound like a broken record at this rate, but yeah, I am trying to get um, my new computer that my dad made me for streaming stuff set up. Um, apologies in advance for not the best sound because I don't have any soundproofing in my new office and my office is huge. It is 11 by 11 and it's like, I do not need this much space for, a, for an office. <laughs> I really don't. Let's see. Let me see what I can do. Body sore AF from helping my brother move yesterday. Oh damn. Yeah, moving, moving's no joke with how much power that it needs. Like, let's see. Okay, open cat. Uh, let's see. Oh, I know what I can do now. I can add this stuff to specific tracks. I'm just gonna have to look up. Um, let's see. 
properties. So you filter, no. Okay. All right, um, before I go too deep into this, I am going to get this set back up. Oh, my tablet is not on, so I'm going to set that back up. Uh, but for, um... So who are you drawing today? Yeah, today I'm going to be drawing one of the uh, folks that played Splatfest with me uh, last week. It's going to be Sinning in the Pain, a, uh, who we often call Pain for short. Yeah, uh, for those that want to uh, hear a little bit about her and look at some of her work, um, she is an artist. She's been making her own uh, VTuber models, especially for um, the folks that we played with during Splatfest, Mom Was Not a Gamer, and d Um But she is a... Give me a sec. She is a uh, part Tanuki uh, huntress, and she tends to play a lot of, like, um, Genshin. So if that's your guys' uh, forte, like, feel free to check her out. Oh, okay. Ooh, I was about to say, are you not working again, stream elements? Alright. But yeah, I got a sketch here that I did on paper and now I just have to start drawing and work on her. Apologies if I sound uh, off. I'm not completely centered to my mic. So if you need me to move closer or whatever or you need me to uh, talk louder, articulate more, uh, anything for you guys to better understand, please let me know, and I will be sure to do what I can. Oh, but, um, when I was talking about, like, weekend stuff, um, things are kind of interesting, uh, right now. So with my tutoring gig, which I'm not sure if I'm going to be sticking with for much longer, um, we go by a combo of U.S. and holidays of the country where my students are, because every all the tutoring that I do is online. Uh, so, um, I have this Sunday off for lab for Labor Day weekend, as well as uh, this coming Thursday, and then after that Sunday, because my normal days off are Friday, Saturday. Uh, incongruence to a national holiday for my students. So, I actually have quite a lot of free time coming up, and I'm trying to figure out um, if I want to stream on any of those days, and if so, what people want to see. And I actually have a few polls going on in my announcements in my Discord. So, if you want to take a look at uh, at the server, that would be awesome and very much appreciated.
can change the music super quick. There we go. Nice and chill. What's not chill is what's going to be coming up uh, next week. Because we got some Splatoon going on next week since that's releasing in... Um, well, next week. It's coming out on... Um, it's coming out this coming Friday. So I'm pretty excited about that. How is everyone else? Uh, about Splatoon. Look forward to seeing how this turns out. Yeah, I'm definitely like pretty excited to. However, I got into Splatoon, the, like the series, incredibly late, so, like, I still haven't even had time to finish uh, Splatoon two. <laughs> so, I am very much late to the party, but I am very curious to see. Uh, how things are going to turn out. By the way, for anyone that is hopping in and also that is hopping in the stream and also is in my server, uh, if you want to sit down and chat, you're more than free to hop in the VC where I am currently doing things for my audio capture. I unfortunately cannot guarantee that you're going to be picked up uh, for the uh, captions and it might take me a bit to reconfigure that, um, but if that's not a problem, then feel free to hop in.
is too thin. So. Kenny underscore B underscore gaming, thank you so much for the follow. Kenny, thanks a whole bunch for the follow, mate. You're welcome. Uh, actually, let me finish up this stroke. Uh, I don't think uh, you were actually in my uh, server, so if you are curious to hop into my server where you'll get announcements for uh, announcements and polls and suggestions for my streams and also notifications for some of my friends such as Asterisk Official who is in the chat with us. Hi Kenny. Glad you're here. Yeah, you feel free to hop stream. over and it'll be awesome uh, for you to be over. Just a forewarning, uh, I do have a bot that will kick people out uh, if they don't verify that they have read the rules and such within 10 minutes of first getting in the server. It's only going to boot you, it's not going to be banned if you don't read it in time, but just uh, be aware of that. But when you are certified for the server, um, I messed with my, con uh, with my configuration a bit uh, so that Anyone who is certified, not just folks I collab with, are able to uh, hop in the VC Road, with not me. sure if you can SE your screen, but Kenny is covering you. Oh. Thank you for letting me know. There we go. Oh, hold on. For whatever reason, I can't hear you. I need to double check my audio. Oh, I, I wasn't talking. Okay, uh, say something. Something. There you are. All right, now I want to actually get my tracks going on so I can get captions. Okay. <clears throat> How have you been doing? I haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, good. Just handling some stuff in a friend of mine's stream. I mean, uh, not stream, uh, server. Mm. Yeah, having to do a PSA in there about, um, people need to stop self deprecating. Oh. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, that, 
I mean, that can be hard, but yeah, that's important. That's important to call out. All right, like, I'm... I'm not gonna lie, I... I've been guilty of uh, self-deprecation as well. Mm. But the thing is, like, when it's to a point where it's very concerning... Yeah. Like, you gotta either, like, figure out what's wrong and, like, talk to somebody. And reel that shit in. Mm. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm wanting to mess with a few things, because I normally try to have captions, um for my streams, but it requires setting up a certain set of, like, I, I need to combine stuff for effectively like a track, and I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that up again. Is it still working? Is it not working? No, it's still okay, working. Fine. Okay, you're uh, fine. Okay. Because I really want to get my uh, my captions back to how they were. Because I've recently had to transfer like all of my... Um, I recently transferred all of my stuff for streaming to a new computer tower that my father built for me. So, like, it's it's a flippin' beast. I love it. Um, but at the same time, I still haven't quite been able to get everything fixed up how I want it to. For now, people are just not going to get captions when you're going to be talking, Kenny. I get so aggravated with my brain sometimes. It's like, no, I want to get stuff done, even though I have a thing that is in my lap right now that I am working on. <laughs> okay, now let's mess with that. All right, uh, Kenny, say something. Okay, something's off on my...
because just suddenly I'm not able to hear you. Have you have you been saying anything? No, your thing's not lighting up. I mean, he did say that he's got stuff going on in another server, so. All right, but okay. That should finally be fixed up to how I want it. Actually, let's move you to center so that I can move. see how that will look. Oh, that's looking much better stance-wise. Hey, hey, you good? Yeah. Nice. And yes, I got it figured out so that it's picking up what you're saying for the captions. Yes. Ooh, it's like Netflix. <laughs> okay. Oh, I forget. Do you play Splatoon at all? Splatoon? Yeah. The, do you mean the uh, the original Squid Game? <laughs> In a literal sense. I mean, you're, you're not wrong, but yes. Um, I don't have a Nintendo Switch, so no. Oh, fair. Because, I mean, Splatoon 3 is coming out next week. Oh, my. Yeah, and I'm planning to um, play that on my game night next week. <clears throat> so, when I was in college, we had a game room. Okay. And... The most surreal thing to me there was you have a bunch of 20-somethings playing games like Splatoon, uh, Pokemon Tournament, you know, stuff like that. I'm not shitting on anybody who plays games that are typically marketed towards kids. Like, if that makes you happy, do do you. It's not my thing, personally. But... Right. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of games are predominantly geared for kids take for example the kingdom hearts series yeah but then there's there's a weird thing and i also noticed this in a lot of animated movies you really if you really think about it there is a lot and i mean a lot of stuff that uh you think on it for more than like 20 seconds it is not kid friendly in the slightest yeah like like one thing I can think of Amazing World of Gumball I do not think that is for children I've actually haven't seen Gumball maybe because Gumball just when when it was like getting live episodes and whatnot, it just wasn't really my thing yeah but you watch Amazing World of Gumball without context there is you're gonna think one of two things. One, what the fuck is this? Why is this basically the internet as a show? I mean, okay, for the record, wasn't that a lot of shows? Because I've 
heard a lot of meme-worthy material came out from, like, regular show. Honestly, yeah. But there was, it was still, like, kid-friendly enough to warrant... Eight. Oops, sorry about that. You're good. Like you said, you're working no... on stuff for for a server. You're a mod. Like being a mod is busy work. Oh no, it's not. It's not mod work. I'm I'm one of the admins. Oh, well, shit. But, but this is. I'll tell you. I'll tell you about my view about being an admin for a Discord server. For several Discord servers in a minute. <laughs> I, I don't like going on random tangents because, like, I may be neurodivergent, but you know. Yeah, no, understandable. Now, I feel like regular show was specifically made for teenagers, like kids who are like growing up to a point where they can kind of get some of the more adult humor. Because if you think about it, regular show, despite being a show that makes you think, oh my god, what the hell were they on? Yeah, yeah, I see where you're getting, it's got, getting with that. It's got great writing and character development. Which you don't usually think about for kids' shows. And then you remember, you had shows like Teen Titans, you had... Symbionic Titan and so on. Right. And I mean, you still get a lot of, uh, a, you'd still get some shows with some really great writing today, like with, um, Owl Howls, Gravity Falls. That's because the writers know what they're doing. I mean, you're not wrong. The, um,. Like, I'm not going to say I'm an expert in any of this, because I know it's a lot of hard work, and it's a lot of stuff that I don't know about. But from what I've seen, when they do it right, it's something special. Mm. I kind of wish there was more shows like Gravity Fall, like the original Teen Titans, and even regular show. Like... It's fun for kids, but at the same time, you can be an adult and watch this and think, oh my god, this is really good. Right. Like, I mean, when I was in high shows, school... I, I've I seen sure, a lot of shows try, like Star Wars is the Force of Evil. Like, it, it's tried, it, it's close, but... Uh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's not that. I just heard you echo for a second. <laughs> oh, it's like, okay, where like, echo, echo like, in chat or on my stream? In chat. That's weird. I mean, I don't Wait. have a lot of stuff in my office right now, so I, I need soundproofing, like, bad. I got it wrong. It's in your stream that you're, there's an echo. Oh, okay. Oh, I see now. I got it. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't realize that I had two tracks in my audio mixer for OBS, and both of oh. them were registering my mic. So I just muted one of them, so hopefully I don't sound like I am burning your ears off. See, I'm not exactly computer illiterate, but I don't know much technical stuff about this stuff, which is why you, even though I have a Twitch account and stream every now and then, you never really hear me use a mic. Hmm. That and you know you play horror games a lot. Eventually, you do say some words that Daddy Twitch does not like. Hmm. Daddy Twitch can deal. That's why I usually stream on like Discord with like the Xbox Companion app and 
whatnot. Right. But, um, where was I? Um, oh, yeah. We were talking about cartoons of great writing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know a lot of the market, they're trying to gear cartoons more towards little kids, but here's the thing. You had people growing up watching The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. A lot of stuff that, if you put 20, more than 20 seconds of thought, had a lot of really inappropriate jokes. Yeah. And then there were others that tried to, like, push the bar in all the wrong ways and for all the wrong reasons, like Grand and Stimpy. So, I never met the creator of Ren and Stimpy, but I met the co-creator, and this was years before people found out that the creator of Ren and Stimpy was, uh... Not a great individual. I was gonna say the, uh, cartoonist equivalent of a Catholic priest, but let's go with that. <laughs> That's another way to put it. And look, the main reason I make that joke is because I was raised Catholic, but I just don't call myself Catholic. Valid. Look, I mean, that's never... Ha I mean those horrible things never happened to me, but I do know it happened to some people. Mm. And, you know, my heart goes out to them. I hope they can get therapy and help and recover. Right, and justice, if at all possible. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm seeing more ads for uh, lawsuits for that kind of abuse in religious institutions than I am seeing mesothelioma commercials, and that's saying something. Dang. Okay, before we go, before we go too, too dark, let, let's get back to the topic of, uh, of cartoons. Right, right. I, I will say, though, uh, five things, that's three things that survived the apocalypse. Twinkies, roaches, and litigation commercials. Mm -mm. I need to send that joke to somebody. Do it. Um, yeah, so... I feel like the shows that have better, like, writing and understanding is the kind of shows that, like, everyone in the whole family can watch it. Like, parents can watch it with their kids. Right. Parents get something out of it. Kids get something out of it. And, uh, like, those are, like, actual quality shows that a lot of these uh, animation companies need to be putting more money into. Right. <laughs> but, it's... you know, you're not going to capture lightning in a bottle all the time yeah and I, I get it for a lot of companies it can be difficult because it's like what do you care more about do you care more about something that is timeless and something that'll give you uh loyalty and royalties or do you care about something that'll be a quick cash grab well at the end of the day companies care about one thing money yeah but There's one thing that I feel like a lot of companies need to understand. Sure, you can have a quick cash grab, but the key word there is quick. You do it too much, and eventually it lowers the value of the brand. Right. No, I definitely agree with you there. That's why a lot of people don't take Cartoon Network seriously anymore, even though it was the pinnacle of what cartoons should have been in, it like, was. the late 90s, early early to mid-2000s. Mm -hmm. And then, for some reason, they had a lot of live-action shows, and those were, those were kind of cool. Like, Destroy, Build, Destroy was my introduction to Andrew W.K. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I feel like Cartoon Network went to him and said, hey, we're doing a show, do you want to be a part of it? And he really wasn't doing anything, so he's like, you know what, why not? Right. And then, like, he went in hibernation until they needed music for Rage 2. Yeah. And then you got... Like, I'm a... Mm. I, I'm just more miffed with Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers right now because of them um, axing and just purging everything about Infinity Trains. Like, do why? 
I mean, I could go in depth on that, but like, <laughs> it's a long rant, and I don't know if I can contain myself with uh, my anger towards Valid. it. I will say though, I am glad the Harley Quinn show is getting another season. Because I feel like if Warner Brothers canceled that, that's just the final nail in the coffin for them. Right. No, I... With, with how popular the Harlequin the show is, <clears throat> I don't really watch it, but I definitely know some people that would be really miffed if it ever, that, that if it ever stopped. I watched the first two seasons when it was on the DC streaming app, and then after the second season was done and I kind of watched everything I could on there. I kind of canceled my subscription and then it it's no longer a streaming app, but mm. all the, all the animated shows on there were moved to HBO max. Hmm. You know, they had some shows on there. Like I completely forgot about like, Legion of Superheroes, which is an un, which is criminally underrated, despite being only two seasons. Thank you, Zelda. Hope you're doing well. Oh, Kenny, and... I got us. Uh, before you continue, I just thought of a thing, and I think uh, you might get a kick out of it because it's going to be a bit of a memory lane so uh top hat my fiance got him and i a gamecube as well as a little a little thingy that will let us be able to like turn the but basically add an hdmi to it and one of the games that we have is og animal crossing i'm planning to be uh streaming that tomorrow night I saw a uh, video where someone thought of a D&D campaign idea. Uh, I'm just going to skip to the punchline. It's basically Animal Crossing. Mm, nice. But do you want to know how they explained it? How? All the players are level zero. So, like, everything they're doing is, like, odd jobs to, like, level up. Mm -hmm. So they can get the town popular enough for adventures to come in and train them so they can go on adventures. But the thing is... They're their motivation for being in town is they're in severe debt. Mm -hmm. They get paid and the t that town's only, only form of currency and their debt keeps growing and growing and there's no way to get out of it. Awesome. Also, I'm doing pretty all right. I hope you get a better soon, Zelda. Like being sick is no joke. The last time that I had, last time that I was sick, it was, it, it, it was the plague that shall not be named. And it was oh, not fun. It was not fun. Yeah, no. Wear a mask. Please. Wear a fucking mask. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> um, another fun D&D &D idea. Are you familiar with the movie Tremors? <laughs> no, actually. Can you give me a rundown? Oh my, okay, it is a classic. Some people say it sucks, and to those people I say, no you. <laughs> it sounds like a bit of a cult classic then, I assume? Mm-hmm. So, the premise of Tremors is there's this town in the middle of the desert called Perfection. It's a very small town. There's only, like, I think, like, 15 people in the town total. Hmm. And something happens to where these weird prehistoric uh, giant worm creature things are burrowing underground and attack everything that, like, I guess leaves vibrations in the ground. So, like, if you're walking, it, it will, like, swim towards you like a land shark. Huh. Or if you're driving, it's going to chase after that truck. It's a good movie. The first one was pretty good because they how they killed the uh, the giant worm things, which are called graboids, because they have these weird beak-like mouths that split up like the predator's mouth at the bottom. Ooh, interesting. And they have these little, these three little tongue things that th th can separate from its body and go hunt for prey. Huh. So it's definitely a unique movie monster. 
I have no idea why, but like you mentioning that it can like split itself just made me think of a modern manga. Yeah, but the thing is, in the first movie, there was only three uh, graboids, I think. And then you find out in the second one that there's more. And oh. they can, in each movie, I think only up to like the third movie, they evolve each time. So like if a graboid consistently eats, it bursts open into basically a graboid flakes. They're much smaller, can hunt on land, and can hunt via heat. Mm. Like if something gives off heat, it will uh, go and try to eat it. Interesting. Yeah, and they they only do they can only do that if they eat a lot. And then the third movie, which was the weirdest one, they evolved to the point where they could fly. Oh, that's freaky. Oh, this is where it gets even freakier. You want to know what they're called? Because the walk the ones that grow graboids that are underground are just called graboids. The ones that are on land are called shriekers because they let out a really loud shrieking sound. Oh, lovely. The ones that fly are called ass blasters. Ass blasters? They f they fly via combustible farts. <laughs> That's about as bad as the fucking Tommyknockers. Are you fucking kidding me? I am not. I really wish I was kidding you, but it was the funniest thing I've seen. I'm like... Did that thing just fart and it exploded? Oh, Zelda says that the fourth film in the series is a prequel, is that right? Yes, and it's hilarious because the most consistent character throughout the whole movies is this guy named Burt Gummer, who, if I can describe Burt Gummer to you, think of Dale Gribble from King of the Hill. Huh, okay. In fact, if you, if you uh, look at some interviews for Mike Judge for King of the Hill, he said that Burt Gummer was his inspiration for... Dale Gribble in oh. King of the Hill. Oh. Yeah, well then. Like, he's obsessed with guns, is paranoid of the government, and uh, is an exterminator. Mm, learn something new every day. But the fourth movie is about his uh, great great granddaddy, uh, Hiram Gummer. <clears throat> and Hiram? The one thing... What the hell kind of name is Hiram? It's a prequel that takes place in the Old West. I never heard someone be named Hiram before. Like, in, in even in an old Western. Like, what the shit? It's a very uncommon name. No I, I'm kind of thinking of it. I've never met anyone named Hiram. I have met so many people named John, Jack, Jake, any other name you can think of. But I've never met a Hiram. Come to think of it, I've never even met an Ethel either. I... I knew an Ethel like in church when I was like super super young. Anyway, Hiram Gummer is Burt Gummer's uh, great granddad, and the thing about Burt Gummer is the man's obsessed with guns. Where like he knows everything about them and has an entire collection. Huh. Hiram knows nothing about guns. In fact. When uh, this bounty hunter came into town and they had to deal with graboids, the bounty hunter brought everyone to go, like, say, all right, pick a gun you feel most comfortable with. This man picks up a Durangler pistol, you know, the really tiny ones that you can, like, <clears throat> they see in some movies that, like, are uh, hooked up to a machine on the on your arm or, like, it just slips out the sleeve and you get the idea. Not really, but I'll take you at your word because I don't give a shit about guns. It's it's, I mean, it's hard to explain, like, without an actual, actually showing it to you, but I don't want to, like, distract you from your uh, thing. Mm. Anyway, uh, the dude picks up, <laughs> the dude, is just, Hiram Gummer is terrible with guns until he gets a little practice in, and then he gets better with it, and thus starts the Gummer legacy of, uh, being obsessed with guns. <laughs> mm. Oh, and also, someone just said in the chat, uh, technic the location in the fourth film is technically the same location as the first films, but it was called a different name by rejection uh, during the prequel time. Yeah, the move in the mo in modern days in, in um, Tremors, it's called Perfection. Originally, it was called Rejection because it was in the ass end of nowhere.
I will say the funniest thing I remember from the third movie is graboids were considered an endangered species and the government tried to relocate everyone, but they said no. And because graboids are such a dangerous creature, they were kind of like stuck in that area. The government workers that told them they can't hunt graboids um, got eaten by them. Well. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, I mean, if you think about it, this is why some animals shouldn't be on the endangered species list. Specifically certain buds of the arthropodic, I mean, animals of the arthropodic nature. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, apparently uh, there's a TV series for this, too. Everyone forgets about the TV series, though. Why? Was it not good? No, like, nobody, literally, literally nobody remembers it. <laughs> it's like a Mandela effect thing. Hmm. I didn't know about it until um, I watched the Kill Count for Tremors. And they didn't even do the Kill Count for the TV series because... I think there was only 13 episodes, and then it was, like, taken off the air, and it's hard for anyone to even find it anymore. Oh, so it's a part of Lost Media now. Yeah, like Firefly. Or, like, the, the now infamous flipping American Sailor Moon pilot, which was actually brought up from the grave. Have you heard about that? What necromancy is this? Oh, yeah. Apparently, before uh, before Deke Entertainment had started dubbing Sailor Moon, um, there was a company that tried to make an Americanized version of Sailor Moon, and there was a pilot that aired in, like, 94, but it was lost for the longest time up until about a week ago. Oh, dang. Um... All right, let's see. I talked about cartoons that have really good writing. Tremors. Is there something else I talked about? I don't remember. Uh, we were talking about, like, cartoon shows a bit ago. Also, is it just me, or did I make the Banes look like Flippin' Yo Asakura from Shaman King? Oh my god, I can see it. <laughs> Sonic King is one of my favorite anime. Yo, have you been keeping track of uh, the remake? Yeah, honestly, I f the remake is better than the original one. Like, I read the manga first. Mm. Well, I mean, Shaman King, uh, the first Shaman King anime dealt with a similar thing as, like, the first Full Metal Alchemist. Like, it tried to do so much before Shaman Kane was finished, and so it kept trying to push itself, and it ended up creating its own narrative. However, it quickly ran out of material, even for, like, it's trying to make its own kind of idea, and so it just kind of stagnated. So, a little bit of a confession here. I liked... Everyone hates on the new... I mean, not the new, the old uh, Full Metal Alchemist. But there's some concepts and stuff from the show, I from the original FMA, that I really, really loved. Mm, it's been a long while since I actually watched the original FMA anime, so I don't remember. The, the one thing I will say, like, that I really enjoyed in, like, spoilers for those that haven't seen the original Full Metal Alchemist anime... Um, was when they claimed that Envy was uh, Ed and Al's uh, unborn brother. Like, that was an interesting twist. Yeah, I, that's one of the things I didn't like, though. Because it feels like they only did that just for, like, a surprise. I mean, yeah... Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. It was a surprise, but, like, at the same time, especially for early 2000s, like, I hadn't heard of many, uh, uh, of many plot twists that would go that far, if that makes sense. Th 
then again, I also lived quite a bit under a rock. The, um... On. Sorry, I'm also playing Sniper Elite 4. Because no, you're good. I figured why not. <laughs> hey, you do you, I do me, and we won't do each other. Probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't ever think of uh, hear that hear that uh, quote without thinking of Markiplier. And I did that. I did that because I was straight up just thinking of Markiplier, so. T. <clears throat> what else was there? Oh wait, I was going to talk about a little bit about Warner Brothers and their whole controversy. Yes. There there's this You know how like people are told certain things and they usually uh, think it's bullshit. Mhm. Mm uh one of the biggest things that people say that I believe that personally I believe is bullshit is when people say, "Oh, if you go woke, you go broke." Yeah. Because if you really think about this, Warner Brothers, apparently the reasoning behind that was because the guy who is in charge of Warner Brothers is someone who is an avid um, <clears throat> supporter of a certain tangerine-colored president, if you catch my mm. And, you know, he fired so many people and put in his people, and they're trying to say, oh, we got to make more shows that are uh, that that are uh, more oriented towards the fans, but the thing is, you already know companies don't give a shit shit about fans anyway, so you already know it means oh they're pushing some right wing bullshit. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing: they said they fired, they cut off so much animation stuff, animation projects because they wanted to save money. They wanted to save like a cool three billion dollars. It cost them five billion, possibly more at this point. Well, damn. Like, it is, it, that just tells me that the principle of go broke, go woke, go broke means nothing. Ay, ay, ay. You know, also, I feel like people say the word woke and they don't know what it means. Oh, yeah, no, people do not know what it means. And especially. Someone tried to say the new Saints Row. Was that, and I'm sitting here like, no, it really isn't. It's the, sh the new Saints Row is more relatable than anything. It just has a very short story that feels rushed. Hmm. I mean, I will say a lot of people, um, I, I will say in quick little bit of political talk for a bit. Um, so if that's not your guys' jive, feel free to mute. Um, Please keep eye on the captions, um, and I'll say when the subject has changed, so that you guys can hop back in. Uh, just real quick, I actually looked up the etymology of the word woke, and it's like, it comes from when, it comes from the 1930s when, uh, like, BIPOC folks were fighting and protesting, like, for some of the early 1900s civil rights movements, and woke meant educated like the phrase stay woke stay educated stay informed now conservatives have taken it to mean anything that is that anything that is against their status quo and that's how woke has been used now it's been conflated with going against the status quo the status quo of culture the status quo of what is expected of video games and especially related to 
anything related to rep representation of minority of minority demographics and minority figures. You know, kind of reminds me of something I saw on, I think it was either Twitter or Facebook. Um, there was a catch-22 principle when it comes to quote-unquote political things. Mm -hmm. Like, i put it this way. <clears throat> they, some people on Twitter, unsurprisingly, get upset over people making characters that fall out of a um, say a certain race mm, okay like they're getting mad over that so you know obviously we call out the racists here mm. <laughs> and they say well why can't you make your own characters but then people do this and they say well why'd you make it political I'm sorry is, is, is there just two kinds of people there's just people that represent you and then political because yeah. it's really not you put more than 20 seconds of thought into it yeah well again because a lot of what people call political especially those that have the privilege to quote stay out of politics anything that is political to them is just content that goes against their status quo or goes against their jive goes against their faith yada 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 it's some be anything related to politics is something that is a risk to their foundation because they do not want to change and they've been in, it's been ingrained in their head that quote that so-called woke culture is propaganda when they don't want to acknowledge or don't have the capacity and that's really bad phrasing just something whether it is them being content where they are now or like internalized ableism or anything else that hinders them from being able to acknowledge the propaganda that has led to them having the perspectives that they have. This is going to sound uh, odd, but not controversial. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm, what you got? I just, I, I just lost it. So <laughs> Uh, do you want to switch subjects? Yeah, that'll, prob that'll probably help a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone, for those that are keeping track of the captions, we are switching topics. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope things are okay. I still can't believe Twitch has a captions option. It's like watching Netflix. <laughs> well, I mean... What better? They do and they don't. Um, with OBS, I had to use I have to use a uh, a plugin, and unfortunately, um, Slobs or Streamlabs doesn't allow third party plugins. Meaning, if you use Streamlabs, you don't have the option for captions. Dang, dude. <laughs> Look, other people have. Have called stream have called Streamlabs slobs because S L O B S, and concerning the controversies like a few years back, like eh, kind of checks out. I kind of figured it would be called uh, slaps. Fair. You know, because if you look at it, it's S L A B. I hear slobs. I'm like, wouldn't there be an O? Well, yeah, because the slobs, as in Streamlabs Open Broadcast Studio, considering the fact that Streamlabs, the their very base is just OBS, but they've modified it slightly to like fit with stuff that they with that Streamlabs uh, works on. Sorry, I'm just 
it get, it takes a minute to get used to the uh, X-ray shots in Sniper Elite Four. <laughs> Oof. Like, I love the amount of detail they put into it, but then you look at it and you think, first of all, that was impossible. <laughs> But I love the fact that they took the entire anatomy of a person into account. Right. But then, like, you do, do a long shot on somebody with a sniper rifle in this game, and you just go, wait, I was aiming for the stomach. Why did it say I got a testicle shot? <laughs> like, I tried to shoot someone in the butt and it said I got a nut shot. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that kind. Not that kind. No, I, I I knew what you meant. I wasn't I wasn't thinking lewd. We know we know somebody else will be thinking lewd. Asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Lexi. Sorry, I'm also keeping track of the time because Top Hat wanted me to make him uh, dinner like by the time that he gets home, so I want to do that for him. You ever just look at certain uh, criticisms of things and think, okay, people are just trolling at this point? Uh, sometimes, but at the same time, like, I also don't fully understand people's emotions and intentions all the time, so, like, I can't really well, tell when people are trolling and when people are doing something worse. Well, let me give an example. Um... You know that new Predator movie that came out? No, actually. Okay, so it's a Predator movie that takes place in the 1700s, like, way before, like, the first Predator movie. Hmm. And the pr basically premise of the new Predator movie, which is called Prey, by the way. Okay. It's about a Comanche healer, you know, Native American healer, hmm. who wants to become the best hunter in her tribe and she has to face off against quote unquote the first predator in recorded history. Oh, interesting. First of all, I think that's a crock of shit because if you think hard about the predator universe, predators have been coming to earth for billions of years. I, I guess. I actually don't know a whole lot on the Predator series. Like, I... I don't I mean, watch not... horror movies. Like, especially survival horror movies all too often. I mean, if you... And I'm, like, more looking at from the lore from the games, the books, oh. the movies and stuff. When Predators come to Earth, they kind of, uh... <clears throat> change certain things about, like, their armor, outfits, and methods of hunting based on the uh, war warriors of different cultures that they uh, go up against. Oh, okay. Like, you have predators that <clears throat> have, like, weird ancient Egyptian motifs to them. You have some that have a Viking motif. There's a samurai predator in one of the predator games. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm telling you right now, I want to see a movie where there's two, there's two predators, an elder predator and a young blood who go to feudal Japan and a samurai training his apprentice have to deal with that predator. That and would the be interesting. young blood. Yeah, it'd be I want to see something like that. I feel like specifically in the predator universe a lot of uh predators 
are what inspired like legends of like various monsters and demons because mm. it makes sense in that universe just wouldn't make sense in real life right But uh, people were saying, well, how can this lady beat the Predator? She has no combat experience. First of all, she's training throughout the whole movie. Right. The whole movie, she is, like, preparing and, like, picking up little bits of information as, like, she's seeing this thing do what it's doing. Mm-hmm. This is my personal experience. Every sci-fi and horror movie follow a very similar formula when you think about it. And what is that formula? People that have no experience fighting certain things or dealing with certain things, having to learn quick how to deal with it. Mm. One of the biggest examples I can think of is Ghostbusters. The first ghost they dealt with, they ran from because it scared the shit out of them. Yeah. But the second ghost they dealt with, this was after they made their equipment for fighting ghosts and, you know, got their uniforms and stuff. They had no experience fighting ghosts until that point. Hell, they didn't even test their equipment until they went to the Stedrick Hotel to fight Slimer. That was the test run. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're not They had wrong. no... They're not, they had no experience fighting ghosts. And they said, you know what? Let's try something. And then they caught it and made a smooth uh, $3,000. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. And then, you know, they're getting more jobs around the city dealing with ghosts. Mm. They can bank and, you know. Um, Evil Dead. The main character, Ash, had no experience fighting demons, but survived several days in the woods, fighting off demons and deadites and even warding off possession. And then sent back in time to lead King Arthur's army to fight an evil version of himself. Mm. That was a demon for some reason. Like, oh. he had no experience doing it, and he's, like, learning how to deal with these things one bit at a time. Mm. The original Alien movie? Ellen Ripley was just a engineer. But she was resourceful enough to figure out how to deal with the alien in each movie. She learns a little more and more on how to deal with them. Until mm. the fourth movie, which... She's a clone with alien xenomorph DNA and is a badass fire. Hmm. The fourth one was super weird because, like, you think after a character dies, that's it. <laughs> but no, they just cloned her. Well, I mean, that's one way to keep a franchise going. Yeah, but then they never continued anything with her, which is really sad mm. but you look at all these movies and you think oh combat combat experience means nothing because it's fighting for survival mm. or going up against things that people have no business going up against and they said you know what screw that I'm still going up against it Hell, if you think about it, the first Predator movie, people would say, oh, well, these uh, soldiers had combat experience. They didn't have combat experience against anything other than people. Right. So they all, con so most of them, except Dutch, lost against an intergalactic hunter that hunts for sport. And he only survived because he got crafty. And then, you know, because the thing lost, it uh, had a mini nuke in its wrist bracer and just destroyed itself. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't find the existence of a predator. Yeah, 
you know, since we're on the subject of like movies, what would you say uh, are some of your uh, favorite movies of a specific genre? Okay, this makes it so much easier because I love, I love a lot of movies. Yeah, like go go genre by genre. Okay, favorite horror movie of all time would have to be Army of Darkness, which is the third Evil Dead movie. Okay. Like because it's just so zany and weird. And I'm sorry, but Bruce Campbell going, "This is my boomstick." To a bunch of people in the Middle Ages, <laughs> to like show he's badass. That 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 will forever be hilarious to me. Right. No, that that sounds pretty funny. Also, because he took his own hand off because it was possessed by a demon in the second movie, and he replaced it with like a like a little device that you can hook a chainsaw into. Huh. They gave him, like, a weird metal hand in this movie, and, like, he put it on, tried it out, and he's, like, groovy. <laughs> oh, that's where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> um, favorite sci-fi movie? Or, or, um... Favorite sci-fi... Specifically sci-fi fantasy, I would have to say, and a lot of people will probably crucify me for this one. Why is that? Solo. A lot of people don't like the newer Star Wars movies. I like some of them. I just feel like if they had better writing, it would. A lot of the newer ones would be better. Hmm. I feel like Ray is a terrific character. It's just people act like, oh, she's a Mary Sue because they poorly write the rest of the characters. <laughs> And this is going to sound weird, but I feel like one improvement they could make to the new trilogy is to give her a double-bladed lightsaber. Hmm. Because they say, well, how could she know how to pick up old Anakin's lightsaber and know how to use it immediately? Give her a double-bladed one. Let's see. Let's see that argument. <laughs> because she was more... She used two-handed uh, two staff when she was a scavenger. Yeah. So she'd be more, I feel like she'd be more used to using a two-handed weapon. A lightsaber you can use with one hand or two. Depending on, like, what form of lightsaber combat you have. Right. But that's that's enough about the the new trilogy, because, like, I, I, I will not shut up if I don't stop. <laughs> but of the newer Star Wars movies, I love the ones that don't focus on Jedi or Sith or anything like that. I like stories like Mandalorian and Solo. Mm. Like, you see, like, how Han Solo became a smuggler, and how he became friends with Chewie, how he got the Millennium Falcon, all that. It was like a sci-fi heist movie. Hmm. And I know, like, some people give it shit because, like, the guy who played Solo had no formal actor training. So they were teaching him as the movie went on. But as you watch the movie, you kind of realize that actor's kind of reflecting how Solo was. He was learning how to become who he was over yeah. time. Like, it's not an ideal situation, but at the same time, it does feel... It fits poetically, given what the story is about. At least that, that's kind of my perspective. I don't know a whole lot about the Star Wars series, namely because I just... That kind of sci-fi isn't quite my thing. I like the idea. Because if you think about it, there was no other movie like Star Wars before it came out. Like, I know it took inspiration from a lot of like old black and white Japanese films and a few other things. But think about this. Was there anything like Star Wars before the first one came out? Not that I can think of, no. Exactly. They caught lightning in a bottle. The, uh... Anyway, favorite horror comedy is definitely Tremors 2. 
Okay, tell me a little bit about that one. I don't know why. I just found it funny when they were like studying Shriekers and found out that it hunts based on food. Because they tossed this thing a cold rotisserie chicken and it just ignored it. Then they tossed it a hot one and it just devoured it. And they realized it's hunting based on heat. Hmm. I just thought it was funny at one point when they had to like sneak past them, they had one guy carry like duct tape a bunch of like ice packs to him and he's just carrying a big thing of like ice mm -hmm. to avoid getting seen. I mean that's kind of creative if you know that your enemy goes off of uh, noticing things by heat. It's even funnier when you consider when you uh there, there's a lot of really goofy things in that movie like Bert Gummer had a big sniper rifle. He shot this thing with one shot a shrieker with one bullet and it completely exploded huh. it was I'm sorry but it was just hilarious to me because it was so unexpected <laughs> there's a there's a principle to comedy I like to call the law like this is this may make me sound like a witcher nerd but it's mm -hmm. the law of surprise if something is surprising in comedy depending on what it is it can be the funniest thing to you hmm so, like, sometimes, like, something explodes in a comedy movie and you can't help but laugh. Like, if you remember a certain controversial movie called Tropic Thunder, one dude got out of a helicopter, took, like, three steps, and then stepped on a landmine. And I'm like, I know I shouldn't laugh, but it's hard not to because I did not see that coming. <laughs> I actually have not seen that movie. I it's am a really, really not that much of a movie goer. It's a really bizarre movie. I'm a... Just let you know that right now. I mean, what kind of bizarre? Are we talking about Satoshi Kon's Paprika kind of bizarre? Are we talking more like Mr. Bean or um, if you do live action a, Pink Panther kind of uh, kind of weird? If you look deeply at the movie Tropic Thunder, it's making fun of Hollywood as a whole because each character is like an archetype of various Hollywood actors. You have Robert Downey Jr.'s character who was a who in the movie played an actor who was a method actor who does some very, very questionable things. Mm. You have Jack Black's character who was someone who was super famous but like kind of fell from glory because they got really addicted to drugs. In his character's case, cocaine. Huh. Uh, you have Ben Stiller's character who's just this fa really famous guy who's a washed-up actor who's just trying to regain a little glory. I think there was like a few others, but like that's usually the archetypes you think of when it comes to Hollywood. And they wanted to make a movie based on v the Vietnam War, so they went to Vietnam. And they, it's things just go wild from there. Hmm. I think the dumbest thing from the movie was when Ben Stiller was alone. He was attacked by a bear, and then he realized after fighting it to the death that it was a panda bear, and he's like, oh. Oh shit, I just committed a felony. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wearing the he's wearing the belt. <laughs> Cause it was such a horrifying experience and then he realized it was a panda bear. He's like, oh god, I'm going to jail. <laughs> mm -mm. He had to call his agent! And the guy was of no help. Oh, God. Okay. As for, like, actual, like, comedy movies... I know I'm just talking about Tropic Thunder, you may think that's my favorite, but... On the contrary, one of my favorite comedy movies... Is Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. And what is that one about? Like, are you, give, give, me are you a, familiar? give me a synopsis of, like, all of these movies, because nine times okay. out of ten, I really have not seen them. I have lived under a rock. Okay. Jay and Silent Bob are characters from a franchise called Clerks. It's a really weird 
I think it was a comic at first, but then it became a movie and then an animated series and then another movie. Jay and Silent Bob are these two guys who hang out in front of the uh, quick stop that the main characters of Clerks work at. And they usually like sell like uh, fake wallets. They sell. <clears throat> they smell. They sell. Uh, let's let's say oregano for the censors. OK. And. Uh, they're basically like the shady guys that you usually see outside of gas stations. But one of them is Jay, who is obviously a stoner. And the other one is Silent Bob, who is his best friend, who does not talk much. And when he does talk, he's like super, super smart. So kind of like the Penn and Teller sort of duo. Yeah, now that you mention it, I think it, if you look at Clerks, it's kind of like Penn and Teller. But the side characters are also Penn and Teller. Oh, okay. Because there's four, there's four characters, four main characters. Well, two, but then there's like two side characters that they're kind of like C-3PO and R2-D2 in Star Wars. Right. Two protagonists. They're there. They're there yeah, they're there, but they're, uh, they're still put on the lunchbox, even though they don't do much. <laughs> so, again, two protagonists, two deuteragonists. Yeah. Okay. And then they have a new Clerks movie coming out where one of the guys has a heart attack because he's getting old. And he figured, you know, we're always watching movies. I think we should make our own movie. And the dude wants to make a movie where it's just about him and his friend working at the quick stop. And they're just saying shit that they've been saying over the years. Mm. And I like in the trailer how they... Like, they say, oh, you should bring up the thing about the Death Star contractors. Yeah, and get sued by Disney? No, thank you. <laughs> oh, you should put Jay and Silent Bob in it. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. What? Why? Jay and Silent Bob are like C-3PO and R2-D2. They've been there from the first movie. They don't really do much, and then they, uh, they still put them on the lunchboxes. It's a... Clarks is just really funny, like, old-school, early 2000s stoner humor. But Jay and Silent Bob was just a movie completely about Jay and Silent Bob, who uh. find out that they're made into a comic but didn't get any money for it. So they're going to Hollywood to go basically shake down the guy who's making a movie based on the comic based on them. Mm. And the movie was so wild... Because just because of the side characters alone, because they meet all kinds of weird people in the way there. Like they meet um, they meet a character played by George Carlin, who like tells them about life and it's really not safe for work. Then like uh, the main bad guy in the movie, based on their comic, was played by Mark Hamill. Mm, nice. It's. It's such a stupid movie, but it's like one of those movies that like you have to see at least once. At one point, they go to one of those cosmetic testing labs and they release all the animals because, you know, it's cruel and stuff. And they they basically befriend a chimpanzee. <laughs> mm, nice. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a. We went over favorite sci-fi, sci-fi comedy, comedy, and horror. If I had to pick a favorite action movie, it would have to be Hotel Artemis. I haven't heard that one either. What's that about? Th this one I thought was really interesting because it's a, it's kind of a cyberpunk movie, but not really. Basically, there's a hotel in this town that's specifically made for criminals. It's like a members-only club. And it does everything from being able to 3D print a liver to <clears throat> suturing, like, wounds. And the premise of the movie is there's these bank robbers who rob a bank and basically steal something valuable to the most powerful criminal in the city, who is played by Jeff Goldblum. And they go to the Hotel Artemis, but because of a uh, lockdown, they're sort of stuck there for the night. 
and the guy, the person in charge of the hotel, Artemis, is this uh, doctor played by I think it was Jamie Lee Curtis or somebody else, but she has severe agoraphobia, so she specifically sends her her assistant out to go do certain jobs for her. It's a really interesting movie, criminally underrated, pun intended. Yeah. It's got an amazing cast. Uh, well, if it's on any streaming service, I might take a look at it sometime. If not tonight, then this weekend, since I have a three-day weekend off work. Yeah, I highly recommend it. I don't know if you can find it on streaming services. I do remember it was in theaters, but people, not many people saw it, so they kind of took it out early. But I did see it with my dad, and he said it was a really good movie. Hmm. I like movies like like that where like the concept of movies like that because it's something different than your typical action movie. Right, and it sounds like something that you don't really expect. Like it really subverts your expectations. Yeah, and like the cast itself is what makes the movie really interesting because you have, you know, the bank robbers, like the dude's basically trying to save his brother who was mm. helping with the robbery. You have this one guy who's staying at the hotel. I forget what he was in there, went, went there for, but basically he's a weapons dealer. Hmm. Um, you have an assassin who is hired to kill somebody in that hotel, which I think was the weapons dealer because they try to kill each other multiple times. But the thing is, because of the hotel's rules, if they try it, they get kicked out. And at that time, it was not a good idea to get kicked out. I think there was only three rules to the hotel. Like basically, you don't, you can't try to kill each other in the building. It's a members-only uh, hospital, and if the city's on lockdown, nobody can get out. Well, and then because these bank robbers stole from the most powerful criminal in the city, he wants in to get what was stolen. The weird thing is, if what was stolen from him was this weird pen that apparently held billions of dollars worth of gold in it. That's weird. I mean, they had to have some kind of MacGuffin. Yeah. Not wrong. Um... If I had to pick a favorite animated movie, and this is probably going to sound so cliche, Atlantis The Lost Empire. Dude, fuck yes. That is a criminally underrated movie. That is a movie that if Disney is working on remakes, remake the movies that people want. That is the movie that got me into con laying. Straight up. Like, not even Star Trek. Like, as much as I love Klingon... No, it, it was Atlantis. I mean, frankly, Okrand, Mark Okrand, he made, Atlant he made Atlantean too. He didn't just make Klingon. So it's funny how I still got inspired by him regardless. The only complaint I have from that movie is how did the Atlanteans know all these languages, but they didn't understand the like their own language? I mean... I will, it seems I, will, like I will say this from a world building standpoint. They pro so they probably learned how to focus on other people's languages and the writing systems there, but with how much they prioritize learning other languages, they probably lost the ability to write in their own. And there's plenty of languages, like and especially a lot of indigenous languages that don't have writing systems. And it is very possible for languages to lose writing systems just as much as they can create writing systems. The thing that sticks out to me the most from that movie, though, is they make it like the Atlanteans never left Atlantis. I mean, they so kind of really... couldn't, considering the fact that they were in a giant bubble. Yeah. But, like, it just comes... It just, like, begs the question, like, how do you know all these languages, but nobody's ever come to Atlantis. 
that is a fair point because like with uh yeah the world mode is like... very weird because like with how mark okren tried to write well not just mark okren but the lore of the movie tries to write atlantean and atlantean culture it is for uh, atlantean is meant to be like the proto-human language it is meant to be the base language which is controversial in and of itself from a linguist perspective concerning the fact that a lot of the influence that Okran takes for Atlantean is primarily Indo-European. There is no, there, there's no Koreanic, no Japonic, no Afro-Asiatic uh, languages, like anywhere. It's all solely Indo-European influences for Atlantean as a language. But also, world building wise, it's like Atlantean is meant to be this proto human language, this Tower of Babel language, the source of all other languages. Trying to imply then that all other languages come from Atlantean, and so there's supposed to be some sort of diglossic or multiglossic kind of situation where you have Atlantean as a language of antiquity among these people. And yet, they're still also able to use French, German, all these other languages as extended languages, like natural, like casual village languages. Whereas Atlantean is still preserved as like a, well, like a lingua franca for the Atlantean world. That is very, very complex and very hard to execute in, in, for the lore. They really uh, put a huge amount of uh, effort into world building. Mm. But then again, from what I've noticed, it just seems that writing, especially something like that, is not as easy as people think it is. Oh, it is not. Especially, like, for another example of how poorly world building, especially when you have conlays and cultures involved, Oh, look at Raya and the Last Dragon. <laughs> now, I know this is probably cheating, but I view stop motion as its own genre. No, that's understandable. And because, and here's the thing I find funny. <clears throat> Every th I have not heard one of one bad stop motion movie. Even though like the, they Hollywood went to a shift to making more CGI movies, mm. but when they use stop motion, somehow something stood the test of time. But favorite stop motion movie? I know some people think, oh, it's Nightmare Before Christmas. That's a good one. But, you know, you see a movie eight times, you already know how it's going to end. Right. Like, that's that's a nostalgic movie. And I, I get why some people may say, like, oh, that's their favorite because of nostalgia. But nostalgia really shouldn't be, like, the be-all, end-all for what, what you may consider a favorite movie. Definitely... A premise, I mean, a, a reason that you like a movie, but you might like something and then grow to not like it. As an right, adult. exactly. But favorite stop motion movie, I would have to say, is uh, Paranorman. That is a really good one. Can we talk about how Paranorman had the first canonically gay character yeah. in uh, animated movies? Mm-hmm. It was a character you least expected. Right?
the um I feel like I'm running out of genres here. Um rom com. I specifically avoid rom coms. I mean valid. Well, not for the reason people think. Oh, people think, oh, well, those are just dumb chick movies. No. The reason I avoid rom-coms is because I feel like a lot of rom-coms reinforce some very toxic and unhealthy ways of viewing relationships. Oh, definitely. And also, I'm just sorry. a lot of rom-coms that I've seen just... There, there's a theme of not-so-great writing. And that just reinforces, like, the toxic... Like, especially in regards to, like, the male love interest, toxic masculinity in regards to perception and things. And also toxic femininity with, like, how much the the female protagonist has to change or, like, push herself, go out of her way to try and get this love interest. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. That's cool. I'm just so tired of this idea that like so here's 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 like a stereotypical thing from rom-coms. You'll have a guy who's interested in a girl and he'll just gives up his entire career the thing he worked hard for just for one person. Mm. I know some people don't want to hear this, but honestly, nobody will realistically do that. Yeah. Like, doing, like, what you spent your whole life working for and then giving it up for one person. Like, first of all, that person, I hope, is really, really worth it. <laughs> But sometimes you have, as sad as the sounds, sometimes, like, they're not worth it. Mm -hmm. I know, like, you don't think about something like that when you think of a movie, but this is going to sound, and this is going to sound even dumb, dumber. Uh, I know fiction, like, determines how we view uh, certain things, but... I really wish they would change certain things. Hold on, I got a phone call. You're good. Just be sure to mute. I hope everyone has been doing today, the doing well today, by the way. It is now 9.45, so I think I may actually go to take a break super quick. Um, not only so that I, because I promised Top Hat that I would uh, set up dinner for him for when he gets home, because he's been busting his butt lately, and I want to be supportive. Uh, but also, my iPad is hot. It is like hot, hot, and I think it'll be good to let it have time to rest. So I think by the when I finish up this line art, um, I will like I'm just about done. I just need to make the smirk. Oh, I need to make the bait, the blade of the Buster Sword. Fuck me sideways. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I gotta make the the guard. But when I get all of that done and taken care of, I will uh, take a break, uh, turn on the oven, uh, give my iPad a break. I hope everyone is doing well. For those that are just hopping in, I am Road the Dusk. You can call me Road, Dusk, Roady, whatever else. Just don't, don't call me anything that you wouldn't call a friend. Um, I am a variety streamer that is currently trying to get up to affiliate. I am trying to get my views up. Um, I tend to do a lot of really chill content. Um, I have a lot of influence from casual streamers as well as political streamers. So do not be surprised if at some points I do bring up some political topics. 
If that is not your fancy, um, you are more than open to mute when that happens. Also, I do have captions and I do have a text to speech bot for everyone uh, for everyone's enjoyment. Um, please use that accordingly, accordingly and sensibly, or else they will have to revoke everyone's privileges regarding uh, regarding the text to speech, especially because that is meant to be uh, accommodating for folks with the folks that struggle with reading and captions are meant to be for those that struggle with hearing or struggle with processing in various degrees. So having to revoke uh, captioning and the captioning and TTS privileges will not be great for those that need it most. Uh, okay. Now to get the blade of the sword. Let's make it like silver, silver. Oh, I just realized I've just been having this based on. Oh, wait, no, this can work. I'll just have the. Okay, so two things. What's up? I didn't realize this because of uh, Discord and Twitch's delay. Mm hmm? But your stream picked up my ringtone. <laughs> I didn't notice what your ringtone was, honestly. You're going to think this is a little goofy, but it's the theme song for the new Saints Row game. I mean, you do you. I know some people might judge me for that, but I'm just sitting here like, look, here's the thing. Saints Row, Saints Row may mess up some things, but if there's one thing they never mess up. It's music. Fair. There's some games I play specifically just because I like the music. Uh, like I was saying to uh, everyone that's in stream, uh, Kenny, after I finish up the line art for this, I'm going to take probably about a 20 minute break uh, just because I need to start setting things up for Top Hat's dinner. And also my tablet is not liking me right now. It is, it, it, it is hurting my fingers trying to hold this in my hand right now. I understand. Yeah, I'm... I still got a little bit left to do for the liner. Like, okay. Only thing that I have left is the guard. I'll have that the same color as her pants. Uh, do, 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 do. I didn't think I could do that. What? I finally uh, purposely pulled off a testicle shot in Sniper Elite. <laughs> nice. It did the x-ray and everything. change the shape of the blade a bit. Okay. And this is a lot thicker. Okay. Well, I will... Okay. Um, are you still going to be in VC, or...? Uh, I'm probably... Well, I probably will. Uh, I'm thinking of... When I have to uh, take my break first, I also want to like get water and all that jazz. So I'm gonna be AFK for uh, for a bit during uh, during um, 
the the break. Understandable. But yeah, when I found out that rom-coms have that uh, reinforced uh, toxic masculinity and even toxic femininity, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not watching these. good yeah this sniper elite is a game where you gotta be smart about everything and somehow i haven't raised the alarm yet sounds like you're pretty good at stealth the thing is i'm not used to sniper elite games not having the alarm raised at this point <laughs> But I guess maybe it's because this mission takes place at night, and I just... The only time I, like, kind of raised an alarm is when I blew up... When I shot the sniper bullet into a truck's engine and it exploded. But it, they were in the alert level, not the alarm level. Uh... Like, they knew something was up, just not exactly what. And it's even more weird, in my opinion, because I am not used to uh, being this patient. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a skill I learned. I don't know. I mean, I would assume you probably had to learn it quickly, given your profession. I mean, I, I don't exactly have a pro profession, per se. Fair. But yeah, if I can compare Sniper Elite to any other game, it would probably be the Hitman games. Except the Hitman games, you get penalized for taking out... Uh, people that aren't your target. Hmm. But then you got uh, this game where you're kind of encouraged to clear the whole map. It's just you have to do it whatever way makes you comfortable. And if things go south, well, you gotta learn to improvise quickly. Hmm. Like, the mission before the one I was doing, you had to go take out a uh, train that's, uh, you know, parked over a bridge, and the train has a big gun on top of it. Hmm. Yeah, so... Forgot the <laughs> controls to this game, it's been months. Hmm.
there's a little pommel, and there's also a little thing before the guard. That feeling when you accidentally alert uh, people, but there's nobody around, so it's probably going to end in a second. <laughs> oh! You, you good? I just. You can tag people in this game, and if you take out officers, you get intel that tells you where soldiers are. Oh. I'm looking, there's a bunch of them, like, crouched crouch down in the distance behind the wall and they're all just like aiming their guns in my direction even though they can't see me. This game is hilarious sometimes. Because of the AI? It's specifically because of the AI. Like, it's smart and it's reactive, but other times it's questionable. If I can compare it to any other AI, I would say... Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm, okay. But uh, the thing in Metal Gear Solid Five is the more you do certain things, the more enemies will prepare for it. Like, if you keep going for headshots, they're going to start wearing helmets. Oh. You keep going... Do missions at night, they're going to put more guards at night. Hmm. All right, I think that is where I'm going to stop with the line art for now. So I am going to go on a bit of a break. Uh, just need to set my timer for 20 minutes. Uh, to do. Also, it is getting pretty warm. Uh, for me, because of just how much heat is emanating from my tower and everything else. So I am going to mute. I'm going to back. I'm going to go AFK for a bit, and I will see everyone in a bit. And Kenny, I'll talk with you soon.
Also wow I only just realized no music was being picked up by the stream. Sheesh Louise. I'm so sorry.
All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy time zone. We are back at it again. And I got a little ahead with uh, working on uh, working on uh, some little extra bits on the lining while I was away, but uh, this will connect, thank you. Uh, we're going to get right into the coloring, which probably, hopefully, won't take too, too long. Hey, Kenny! Alrighty. So, what you want to talk about while I'm working on the rest of this? <laughs> Don't jinx yourself. Right. I can only imagine. Oh, it was just, I just, sorry, I freaked out because I was like, wait, I'm not seeing captions, but no, they just don't show after a period of silence. So I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. I still had the separate audio for the VC muted, so now it should be able to pick you up. How long have you been playing Sniper Elite? Like, not today, but like in general. Well, the first one I tried was Sniper Elite 5 because it was the newest one that was released for Game Pass. Oh, okay. But... I started playing Sniper Elite 4 because I'm like, okay, well, so what makes these so different? Um, a lot, actually. Sniper Elite 5 makes some things, like, super, super easy. But Sniper Elite 4, you're really in the trenches with this one. Mm. Also, one thing I like about 4 over 5 is... You carry three weapons with you, a pistol, a sniper rifle, and you can choose between a submachine gun or, like, certain other weapons. You can put in a shot- you can carry a shotgun with you. Hmm. You can't get a shotgun in the newer Sniper Elite. <laughs> Which, to me, doesn't make sense. I know it's probably for, like, history reasons, but I feel like... They were using whatever weapons they had during that time. Yeah, I guess.
Oh, here's a completely random question, but I just remembered a game series. Did you ever play uh, Sly Cooper? I played once, and I was not very good at it. Would you ever want to, like, get back into it? Depends on which Sly Cooper. Fair. Because, like, I've only ever seen, like, playthroughs of, of, of Sly. I've never owned a copy of it, personally. I wish I had a, my own copy. Well, my cover's been blown, but that is okay. Because they can't really get me. <laughs> and how is that? Because I rigged every every uh, possible entry. Oh shit, I forgot about the back way. <laughs> there's always one. Yeah, I was about to say there's always one. So they have a general idea of where I am, they just don't know how to reach me. Well, hey, at least they don't know exactly where you are. So luckily, at least the little section I'm in has no enemies, so I can... <laughs> go loot other people. Hold up, I got another phone call. Okay. That was just my mom telling me goodnight. Okay. Oh my god, there's no way. What? He's running straight to my trap! Mm -hmm. Please give me the... Please run towards it. He did. He didn't give me an x-ray, though. Oh. There is this one uh, Scottish YouTuber I watch who uh, plays uh, Sniper Elite and Hitman. Mm -hmm. That man knows how to make it hilarious. Mm -hmm. Nice. I think one of the funniest things I remember from uh, one of his Sniper Elite 5 videos was when you play this game, and like you uh, like can tag enemies, you can see a little thing about them, like their name or like why they joined the uh, the German army in World War Two because it's a World War Two game. Oh, okay. And what? And it's I found out it's not randomly generated. Well, dang. so 
yeah, that's what makes it even funnier. The uh, one of the funniest ones I remember was uh, this one soldier apparently. Oh shit! Did you what, get, it started. Did you, get found? Start... did you get caught? No, I found something even more terrifying. They have a tank. Oh, be careful. And it's, it's moving, too. Be careful. The thing is, because if you aim at vehicle to the sniper rifle in this game, you'll see certain parts glow red, which means they're weak points. That's, like, ways into the engine or their tires. Mm. The tank has a very tiny... A very tiny uh, window. That if you show, oh shit! There was a lot of them. Hmm. There is five directly in front of me. Oh! I'm gonna see if I can take them out with one thing of TNT. They disarmed it. Wow. That was my last stick of TNT. Anyway, before I before I get mad. One of the characters uh one of the soldiers you tag in Sniper Elite 5 in one mission says apparently they starred in some French movie. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, oh, well, he's starting a movie of mine. I call it uh, Honey, I Shot the Germans. And then he made a fake movie poster for it. Wow. The, the, the fact he did this just for a shit post was hilarious. I have it saved too. I'm curious about it, but I'm also a little concerned. Uh, it said, Honey, I shot the Germans. A Patty Strongjaw production, because the he nicknamed the character Patty Strongjaw. <laughs> <laughs> and the tagline to the movie was, If there's a scope, there's a way. <laughs> well... I absolutely love stupid shit like this. Okay, I managed to slow down the tank. Nice. Somehow they don't... Hold on. Oh, I shot one of the parts of the tank, so now it's sound masking everything.
when you big brain something that uh, but have little brain. <laughs> what what you do? Uh, did you say that because of something that you just did in game? Yeah. What you do? <clears throat> Made sure to check my surroundings. Uh, Which I know isn't like much, but it's the smartest things. You, it's the smartest thing you have to do in a game like this. Right. No, understandable. Oh, the driver's of well, the tank is uh, out of commission. Why did you smash it? No, I managed to shoot through the tiny window. tablet just got really hot in my hands again. I'm like, I do not like this. does not look good.
period of months. are for like a raccoon dog. She does have um, little gradients and things at like, the top of the ears, so I'm going to add that in. But yeah, the layer's empty, so. That's one tank down. Nice. So I called my... <clears throat> I was going to say it took all my TNT, but then I just got one back.
this needs to be more saturated. Good? Yeah, I just needed to clear my throat. Oh, okay. You're doing a amazing road. Sorry I am quiet. Working on content too. You're good, Lexi. No, we're... We're both working on our stuff. It's all good. I like how every time I uh, am at an elevated position and snipe an enemy in this game, it says I get I got the um, high ground, hmm. and I just can't sit here and think. I keep sitting here and thinking it's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. <laughs> Oh, that would be hilarious for a, a point redeem at some point. I remember just because of how um, some nerds are. In one of the Star Wars Battlefront games, you can play as like the heroes and villains, like Jedi and stuff. Wasn't that uh, Battlefront 2? Yeah. I mean, even in the original ones, you could do that, but battlefront 2 there was one i remember that was hilarious i saw a video of it where one person was playing vader and one person was playing obi-wan and obi-wan got to like a pillar above vader and he just walked away <laughs> i'm like oh my god anakin learned his lesson <laughs> I feel like that's the one thing Obi-Wan specifically didn't teach Anakin, is that if you have a el higher elevation above someone, you have an advantage. Mm.
It's like a very notable... Yeah, there we go. That's the color I need. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna pull up her design. Because I had her colors somewhere. Uh, and my posture is not good. No, you are not falling asleep on me. Oh, shoot, I got some of the colors wrong. So for V. Oh, shush. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Materials.
yeah, that, that works. Okay, now... She has a very saturated, and she has a very saturated color palette. She's the least. It's 11. I might be able to finish this before midnight. That's going to be, that's going to be surprising. Oh, I need to make the brooch. I'll do that as like a finishing touch.
that will also right. be the color for the straps. What's up? So, one cool feature of the Sniper Elite games is there's enemy snipers. Hmm. You know one sees you when you see a little white flash on your screen. And there's a sound cue. Hmm. But it's kind of like nerve wracking because you have to quickly figure out where they are. Because if they see you and you don't see them, well, they have the advantage. Right. And like any game in life, it's better to play with advantage than without. Mm.
<clears throat> There's one thing you can learn from Sniper Elite, it's that sometimes playing games like this is the biggest game of Fafo. Fafo? Fuck around and find out. <laughs> oh. Because they have indeed messed around, and they found out that that was a horrible idea. Mm at the bottom. There we go. And I forgot to turn the bits here.
hell is this? Hmm? What's up? What'd you find? Right back. Sorry about that, I was helping my grandma. You're good. So, um... What's up? On Twitter, I keep getting follows from... I'm thoroughly convinced they're bots at this point. Okay... Because, here's the thing, I don't try to make myself big on Twitter. So it's kind of annoying when I see, oh, so-and-so is following you. And you can tell it's obviously a fake or like a catfishing account uh... so it's kind of like really annoying like generally I do not follow oh damn I don't follow any accounts that were made very very recently hmm. unless I know for a fact that's a person Right. I will say though, Twitter has finally done something smart. They made it to where only where you can control who sees your tweets. That can only go so far. To an extent. Skin? Oh, 
problems. Um, I accept we combined it with that. Okay. Okay, reconnection is successful. Yay! I take it OBS crashing is really, really, really bad? Yeah, because it meant that um, my stream just went completely blank on Twitch. super close to done. Uh, just need to work on little details in the blade, and then I think I'm actually like done done. Dream to find. Thank you so much for the follow. Dream to find. Thank you so much for the follow, and thank you for tuning in. Um, for a little bit of intro, actually, for those that are just hopping in. Uh, hello, I am Road to Dusk. You can call me Road Dusk, Rody. Any of those are fine. Just don't call me anything that you wouldn't call a friend. Uh, I am a nearly budding variety tuber. I do art, and I also do games. Uh, a combination of new and retro. The reason why I say retro is because tomorrow, just for a bit of an example, uh, I am planning to actually play uh, some like OG uh, Animal Crossing from the GameCube because my fiance and I recently got a GameCube and we're really hoping to get like the thousand year door for it soon but until then we have super mario sunshine and og animal crossing which I, i'm really excited to uh, experiment with because i never actually messed with uh gamecube my very first console was the ps2 which same era but <laughs> yeah not uh, not the, um, not, 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 just not the GameCube, which is totally fine. I'm not dissing on Nintendo or anything. When I was younger, I just had a hodgepodge of a bunch of different consoles that I would play. And so, yeah, I do a lot of gaming and art, as you see here as well. Um, if this is... Uh, your fancy. I would love for you to continue to watch, and I would love anyone's uh, company tomorrow, especially during not only the um, when I'm going to be doing uh, Animal Crossing, but also on Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a commission with a friend of mine who's wanting to get their foot in the door into hopefully doing some storytelling with a uh, with a nice little model um, and we're gonna be talking together working collaborating together as I work on um, a an official piece 
for her character design. I would love for you guys to tune in then because I think it would be a great time to introduce you all to uh, another newbie uh, VTuber who's wanting to get her foot in the door and I feel like being able to support each other would be really really great. So if you guys could tune in then that would be awesome. Uh, I will say also next week on Saturday I will start playing Splatoon 3. I have my Fridays uh, set up for my for my drawing and Saturdays are my gaming so I might uh, I might be regularly incorporating Wednesdays as a as a whatever day. Um, but yeah next Saturday will be Splatoon 2 absolutely because that comes out like the Friday of that week, which I'm pretty excited for. Um, if any of this uh, suits your fancy, please feel free to stick around. I would love, uh, I would love your company. Also, I will say I am currently trying to hit affiliate. I have many plans for, uh, for stuff for. Have for VTubing, reward, like redeem points and and such. And I would love to be able to execute that sometime soon. So I would very much appreciate um even if you're just lurking, I would very much appreciate your company. Uh if you want to be sure that your lurking will count as a view, however, um be sure to don't mute my video. Mute the tab. When you mute the tab, Twitch's algorithm won't uh, register that as a, basically like a minimizing. If you do, however, mute the video, it will not count that as a view. So if you want to still count, count as a view and help me out with my numbers to get me up to affiliate, muting the tab is the way to go. If you're on mobile, hopefully, um, my voice, my friend here, and the music that we're listening to will suffice enough to help you get some adequate rest. I think that will, well, I want to add some color to, the pommel. And we'll do the hill as well. color to pants
since I fluffed up all my layers. May as well just fluff up all the way. There we go. It took me just a minute, just 30 seconds sigh of two hours to get this mission done. <laughs> Like I said, I'm very methodical when it comes to stuff like this. Mm. On the bright side, I leveled up like three times. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What? The only way to unlock the trench gun, which is the shotgun in Sniper Elite 4, is to kill a sniper with it. 
Oof. You know what makes it worse? What? Trench gun is uh, pretty hard to find in some levels, and snipers are very rare. Like you'll find only like maybe like one, two at at most three per level. Oh wow. Sounds like someone. Sounds like someone's having a good stretch. Yeah. bits of light to the sword with some extra bits of reflection. You are at 56 followers. Yay! I just need... Yay! I'm super excited and super happy that I'm at 56. I just need uh, my views to be 
a little bit higher, which last I checked, uh, my average is at 2.4. So, yay. How have you been doing, by the way, monkey? I'm good, thank you. That's really good to hear. Uh, what have you been playing lately? Nothing today been sleeping more than I should. Uh, fair. Is today an off day? That will actually do it for like the coloring aspect. No. Yeah, because I like where this is. And pain, the person who I'm drawing here, uh, is asleep by now. Yeah, it is just shy of midnight. around with a uh, materials. Oh, come on. I know there's like a short grass. Organic. Haha. -ha. Clay, hemp, stable, bamboo, twig, wild grass, short grass. There we go.
might have to do this actually. Hold opacity. something already set for like a possible tree. So let's do that. Sure. Oh wait, this might not have been the right one. Um, that's wood, but that's like plank wood. I think this will do. Well, the yeah, lesson but... has been learned. <laughs> and what would that be? <clears throat> Avoiding uh, certain things on Twitter is self-care.
think the dumbest thing I've seen on there recently is from a certain political figure who tried to say that kids, Kid Rock's music was thought-provoking and whatnot. But Taylor Swift's music wasn't. And I'm sitting here like... He sang a song in Osmosis Jones that has very questionable lyrics. Right. Just saying. Oh, it's, it's definitely thought-provoking. That thought is usually, um... Put his ass in jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, even Rob Zombie has better thought-provoking music, and you should hear some of the titles to some of his songs. Ay, ay, ay. I can't get over the fact that they're making a new Tales from the Borderlands. They're making a new what now? Tales from the Borderlands. Mm, it was a Telltale really. story took place in the Borderlands universe. That might be why I've never heard of it, because I've never really got into Borderlands. I mean, I saw a trailer for the new Tales from the Borderlands, and I could not stop laughing that the main bad guys was a corporation called Tedior, who makes guns that, instead of reloading them, you throw them and they destruct into your hand again. <laughs> With a full magazine. Huh. But, like, you throw them, they explode like grenades, or they turn into homing rockets, or... This is my personal favorite. You throw them and they they turn into guns with legs. Okay, then. And they have AI, too, so I just could not get over the fact in the trailer there was a little squad of TDR soldiers who was led by a talking machine gun. Borderlands has just always been goofy. It's just you never really consider like how go how goofy it is until you like actually talk about it out loud. I mean, more power to you. But I'm also someone who will specifically play a game just because it's different or because it's weird. Hmm. And then people like talk about like tasting games like, oh, if you like this game, you have horrible tasting games. I'm sitting here like your booze mean nothing when I've seen what makes you cheer. Yeah, valid. Just they always they always release like a new Call of Duty or new Madden every year. and It's the same game with a different skin. There's 
set flare. I remember they put King Kong and Godzilla fighting each other in one of the new online Call of Duty games, and they didn't do anything but just stand there. If you just shot at them enough, they would actually do something. Hmm. And I'm like, what is this goofy shit? You know what will forever be uh, funny to me? What? So, one thing I do that's like a personal therapy thing for myself is making memes. Okay. But they're like s hyper specific memes related to stuff to me. Okay. For example, I have a hate for low floor toilets because. You have to keep flushing, and they, they say, oh, it's supposed to save you water. It's not really saving water if I have to flush three times, and now is it? <laughs> so I made a meme that was just like the fucking cover of Doom, and it said, no, <clears throat> me, dies. My friends and family, haven't got another angel today. Me in hell. Where's the guy who invented low flow toilets? Nice. Um... I made another meme that uh, has, I don't know, some angry Reddit face, and then one that's like a super hyperactive gremlin underneath it. And the top it says, video games that are actually different but have buggy launches. <laughs> uh, next to the angry guy, it says, gamers who are harder to please than a girl with a boyfriend who can't find uh, the you-know-what spot. <laughs> oh... And then underneath it, next to the gremlin, is my autistic ass, because I have autism. Hmm. I mean, I'm I'm on the spectrum there with you, mate. Pineapple on I just, pizza is I good. I said that to somebody, they could not stop laughing. <laughs> and they're like, why did you call me out like this? I'm like, sir, I'm calling myself out. <laughs> also, hey, DBS, how's it going, man? Any who disagree can fight on me on it. Oh shoot. Oh, my tablet is almost... It's at like 38%. I should put it on the charger soon. See, any who disagree can fight on me on it. Also good just looking for work still how y'all doing? Just for me, uh, namely working on this. Um, really excited for tomorrow because Top Hat has a day off, and I'm hoping to see if I can convince him That's to good come on work. with me for uh, gaming tomorrow since I'm thinking of playing some 
by OG Animal Crossing. Work is going okay. Um, still pretty stressed out with uh, work. Not I that'd be cool. Hours. And yeah. hoping that things will get better with my work. Uh, I did also apply for a, uh, a place like that's only like 10 minutes walking distance from where I currently live and thankfully I wouldn't have to um, walk through any like intersection or anything which is very nice. Especially because safety is important. Uh, but yeah, here's hoping that I get that job because I think that would be really nice. Mm. Okay, I went a lot harder on the background than I thought I was going to. Uh, Kenny, what do you think of this? I'm sorry, what, what am I thinking of? Uh, look at the stream, and look at what I have for, uh, the background, and tell me what you think. Are those, uh, two trees in the background? Yeah. It looks pretty good. Kind of hard to tell if they're trees, though, but that's probably because... I'm the kind of dude who texture. walk and make traffic stop for him, not the other way around. Yeah. And that, that's fair. I'm kind of going off of what um, texture stuff is available with um, what, um, well, words. Why can I not word? What um, this program has automatically set uh, in its uh, system. It's very, it's hard to see given like the flare but there is some texture there for the tree. Do you think I need to add more texture? To, to the tree, yeah. Okay. Also, Kenny, what you think of the new Saints Row? Also, words do be hard, LOL. Oh, DBS is asking you, Kenny, what you think of the new Saints Row. <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest with you story-wise I feel it's very short and rushed like you get a lot of build-up at first but then it goes on a steady decline towards the end Because when you take into account the main missions, which include, you know, like the main story and the loyalty missions for the character's three best friends and slash roommates, there's only 11 missions. Good reboot or could have been better. Also, no spoiler. Mm. Uh, DBS just asked, good reboot or could have been better. Also, no spoilers. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you any story spoilers. I'll say this much: it does have the Saints Row feel to it. It's not gonna have any like obscenely crazy things like in Saints Row Three, where you can drive on a hover. Been doing good about keep myself uh, spoiler fly free. Out in the first suit and then beat someone with a giant, let's say phallic, purple <laughs> weapon. Oh, I've heard about that. And yeah, no, that's understandable, trying to keep uh, as but far like, away from spoilers as possible. But it is... It, it's fun. It, Gameplay-wise, it's fun. It's just story-wise, it could be better. Hmm. Like, I didn't even realize it until after I beat it. Like, what was the point of certain things in the story if they had no impact on the end? Like, they had me thinking one specific thing was essential to the story, and then all it is is just... 
a thing that you go steal for a couple missions. I will say right now, the one complaint I did have is there are a few bugs where some missions will start and you just die for no reason. Oof. But like a, a restart of the game and then lo and behold, they're working. Well, at least it, at least they were working. Yeah. I'll say this much, people say the story does suck, but here's the thing though. This is a game that Sto that stories range from leading your own gang to becoming celebrities, president of the United States, and mm. all kinds of absurd things. I'm not looking for revolutionary writing in a Saints Row game. I will say, though, the characters are relatable. Mm. Okay. But okay. the thing that I was looking for the most in the game was car customization. Hmm. Because I am a big customization nerd when it comes to video games. Like, I will spend hours working on something to make it look good. Nice. Alright, I think that is going to be where I'm going to leave it. Leave it, because I especially didn't expect the, uh, the flare or anything that to be in, like, the, the brushes. So I'm like, huh. Okay, this is pretty nice. So... Payne, if you're watching the bot here, you better flip and love this. I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's going to be where I'm going to end. That's fair. Tonight. I'm just glad you kind of got a better review of it than game bad and not good like older ones. Also, it's the start of the Saints, so PPL gotta understand it won't be too big big yet, but cold get there if this one does well enough, yeah, no? Mm. Okay, so DBS just said, that's fair. I'm just glad you kind of got a better review of it than, quote, game bad and not good. Good like asterisk. Old, like, old, like older ones. Also, it's the start of the Saints, so people got to understand it won't be a big thing yet, but could get there if this one does well enough, you know? I'd also like to point out one important detail. It's a reboot, so it's Saints Row in an alternate universe. Right. So technically it is canon to the original one, but not really. But I'm not going into multiverse theory. Mm. But it's fun. It's When it comes to games, get whatever you want. Play whatever you want. Screw the reviews. Because people say, oh, this game is bad because this, this, and this. But they'll praise another game that has the exact same qualities. Mm. Like, they'll, like, people act like Fallout New Vegas is the greatest game of all time. And yeah, it's fun as hell. But when it came out, it was super buggy to the point it crashed every five minutes on PC. Well. But then they'll condemn Cyberpunk 2077 for its glitches. I'm sitting here like... No multiverse like theory on stream, we'd be here for days if that was the case, <laughs> lol. DBS just said, no multiverse, no multiverse theory on stream, or we'd be here for days if that were the case. But, yeah, like, people were saying Cyberpunk sucked. I'm like, look, I've been waiting years to play this game. I'm playing it even if it does suck. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I had fun. It was emotional. It was long. It was gritty. It was what I wanted in a Cyberpunk game. Nice. And then people, you know, I'm not going to go in the whole controversy thing, because if I start on that, I really won't shut up. <laughs> I'll just say... So, Cyberpunk controversy is proof of why Twitter controversy is bullshit because you'll have people mad about one thing but then say something much worse. Mm. I'm not even lying. <laughs> I might try it again since it has massive updates now that make it better also, plus free like, DLC hopefully. In like 11 days we're getting an anime based on Cyberpunk 2077 and... Thank you, Rinka. I didn't even notice that there were bots in the chat. <laughs> Alright, but I think... Um, I mean, do we want to keep the stream going and just chatting for now? Because I think the picture's done. 
mean, it's up to you. Because, mm. like, yeah, I... Mm. There is. Oh. oh, thought I was the only one in chat, lol. No, I think Rinka just I popped because she's been uh, watching, like, Lance and a few other folks as well. But, yeah, I think... I think I'm going to cut it here tonight just because it is 20 past midnight um and like if i try and continue this um i'm probably gonna add way too much texture and lighting to everything in here to where it's just going to be a mess <laughs> yeah i think that's going to be where i'm going to stop because also my throat hurts and i need some water because I've been hyper focusing and I'm not do a just chatting stream at some point though please I could do that actually I could do that actually I might do that if on one of the days that I am off actually actually this gives me a perfect idea because I have some days that I am open for possible other streams since um, I have the Sunday, I have this coming Sunday, and then this coming Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. So um, I have a lot of days that I'm open to like talk. So if people really want a just chatting stream, um, put it in the stream suggestions in my server right there. And also let me know what day that you would prefer to see a stream like that from the announcements. There's a little uh, emoticon poll on there. Uh, with that said, yeah, I think this is gonna be where I am going to call it. My back is killing me, my throat hurts, and yeah. So Kenny, thank you so much for hanging out in the chat. Uh, asterisks, uh, DBS, uh, let's see, Monkey, um, Zelda, especially, Zelda, you adorable bean, um, and everyone that has followed today and tuned in, thank you so much for your time, uh, thank you so much for chicken nuggets, whatever, yes, chicken nuggets, all the chicken nuggets, um, <laughs> and I will see you guys tomorrow where we will be having a retro night with OG GameCube Animal Crossing. Hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Bye! -bye. Actually, before we go, we should probably set up who we are going to raid. Uh, let's see who we got available. Uh, you know what? We're going to go for our most beloved... And I'm going to turn the music back up. We're going to go for our most beloved um, half-demon culinary student, Venus Dawn MTK. So, let's see. Oh, is this someone that's in the server? Uh, not in mine, but uh, a friend of Flexi's. Okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, she's not in my server yet. I keep tiptoeing, I, like, being around the bush and trying to ask her, like, hey, you want to be in my server? But, uh, Venus is currently doing a karaoke stream, um, and I'm really curious about, uh, how that's going oh, to Lord, go. If, if we were, if we were in that stream, do we have to participate in karaoke? Because I have a terrible singing voice. No, you don't have to. Like, you're more than fine to just lurk. Alright. Yeah. But I'm going to start the raid off, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is in your time zone, and I'll see you next time. For realsies this time. <laughs> okay, how do I join the raid?